Quinn Talley picked up his pace as he was descending Mount Hood. The increasing wind speeds and foggy clouds was a sign the weather conditions were deteriorating. Tally had summited Mount Hood over 20 times, so he was an expert in these matters and did not want to be caught on the peak in a storm. As he made his way down, something out of the corner of his eye made him take a look. What he saw next, he couldn't believe. He rubbed his eye to make sure his mind was not playing tricks on him. But no, it was not a trick. A man was cartwheeling down the mountain in an uncontrollable fall. This is the story of Mia Sumi. Mount Hood is located 50 miles east of Portland, Oregon, and is one of the most unique places in the United States. The mountain is the highest point in the state and has three different elevation levels listed, all within a few feet of each other. But the most recent height stands at 11,240 feet, or 3,426 meters. The location and surrounding area is extremely popular to travel to for outdoor adventures. The mountain is surrounded by 12 glaciers that cover about 80% of the peak's surface. Well over 10,000 people travel to the area to hike annually. There are hiking trails that lead up to 8,510 feet on the mountain. In order to reach a higher elevation, you must have the proper climbing equipment and be able to pass small technical challenges. The easiest route to the summit is a climbing class 2, which is on the level of only occasionally needing to use your hands while scaling. With all this being said, the mountain is still a dangerous place to spend your afternoon. A large portion of the accidents that occur are from the result of falling rocks or ice in the summer months. This is because the increasing temperatures cause chunks of ice to melt or shift. But perhaps the most interesting feature about Mount Hood is that it is not actually classified as a mountain, but instead it is a volcano, one that experts believe has a 3 to 7% chance of erupting, marking it as potentially active. This adds an extra layer of complexity to mountaineering adventures, because if there is an eruption, not only will lava flow from the mouth of the peak, but deadly gases will also leak from crevasses. Experts have been ramping up the early detection systems within recent years in order to increase public safety. As you can imagine, because of this unique feature and the fact that Mount Hood is surrounded by glaciers, hidden crevasses play a pivotal role in the mountaineering path you take. Generally, under good conditions, these crevasses are not too challenging to overcome. But if a climber is unfamiliar with the route and is in deteriorating weather, hidden crevasses suddenly become much more dangerous. In early February 2018, 35-year-old Mia Sumi of Portland, Oregon, along with three other friends, Matt Zavortink, Cheche Thongthap, and Kimberly Anderson, drove the 50 miles from Portland to Mount Hood for an expedition. Mia had already summited the peak three times, and was becoming more familiar with the journey as he gained more knowledge. By no means was he an expert, but Mia had summited a handful of peaks throughout his life and had some mountaineering experience. The group had brought ice axes, ropes, crampons, and helmets, so they were well prepared for the task in front of them. Mia Sumi and his friends started their climb on February 13th, hours before the sun would rise. They planned to make the ascent and descent within the same day, which is normal for those climbing Mount Hood after getting a bite to eat, having their morning coffee, and putting on their shoes, they set out for the summit. They were following the typical south side route, which is the easiest and most known path one can take. Mia couldn't help but smile as the sun greeted them on the horizon. Mia turned to Matt and told him that he estimated about another hour and a half before they were all standing on the summit. Matt acknowledged Mia's comments as he wiped the sweat off his face. The temperature on the mountain was slightly above freezing. In February, this is not the norm, and many climbers on Mount Hood were taking notice as the higher elevation conditions were beginning to melt in the sunlight. At the time, me and his friends were unaware of this fact, and they would keep climbing to the summit. As the hours progressed, the climb became harder and harder, proving to be more difficult than they originally anticipated. 
Chet Che and Kimberly decided to not go for the summit, and instead, they would wait for Mia and Matt at a lower location. Mia and Matt continued to climb through the snow and shifting ice until their efforts were successful. They stood on top of Mount Hood. Eager to reunite with their friends, they took in the moment for a minute before mentally preparing themselves for their return journey. The 10 a.m. morning sun burned their exposed necks as their legs began to move, initiating the descent. Although the weather was stable and showed no signs of deteriorating, this was very deceiving to inexperienced individuals. Because the temperatures remained above freezing, many of the attached rocks and ice began to melt and tumble down the mountain. It did not take long before the melting got worse as more and larger debris started to fall. Calls began to come into base camp and the rescue center. Nothing too major, but many climbers on the peak became trapped due to the falling debris. Mia and Matt could tell the mountain was shifting, but there was nothing they could do. The pair focused on the task at hand, desperate to be reunited with their two friends. Mia was ahead of Matt and started to descend through a section called the Old Chute, which is right under the summit. This section is not particularly challenging, but due to the increase of falling rock and melting ice, the difficulty had an added pressure. Mia continued his descent, wanting to move faster. He quickly stepped on some ice, and that's when it happened. He fell. It was not a slow fall either. Mia's foot lost its grip as his leg was no longer supporting him. He landed on his back and instantly began tumbling down the mountain. Nothing stopped his fall, and there was nothing Matt could do but sit there and watch his friend tumble over 900 feet down the mountain. Matt started to chase after Mia as fast and safely as he possibly could. Other climbers report eyewitness testimonies of Mia falling down Mount Hood as over a dozen climbers began moving to his crash location. The closest mountaineer was about 200 feet away, and after seeing what happened, he made a call to search and rescue, giving the exact location of Mia. The man would also make his way over to him and stated that he looked to be in bad condition. Mia was still alive, but barely. His vitals were extremely weak, and there was blood leaking out of his ears. The man started performing CPR as more climbers began showing up on scene to help. Eventually, Matt would make it to Mia, where he also participated in performing CPR. They desperately tried to keep him stable, but there was only so much that you can do with the equipment that was available. Finally, after two hours had passed, at 1 p.m., a Black Hawk helicopter lifted Mia off the mountain and escorted him to a Portland hospital. While this was ongoing, Chet Che and Kimberly had no idea what happened to their friends. But instead, they faced their own problems. The falling rocks and ice caused them to be trapped and to make matters worse, as they were trying to take shelter, a falling ice chunk struck Kimberly, causing her to become immobile. Kimberly would call rescuers, crying to them and asking for updates on Mia. But at the same time, they could not provide any, and they were left in the dark. It would take hours before Kimberly and Chet Che were rescued by a sled. It was only after they had all made it back safely when the news broke to the group. Mia had passed away. Although Mount Hood is often considered a beginner's peak, and it is a popular location for inexperienced mountaineers, the dangers cannot be understated. Due to the unique attributes and the varying weather conditions, this story serves as a reminder that no matter how easy the peak may seem, there is always deadly traps ready to catch you if you are not careful. Matt and his friends would go on to thank all of the climbers that assisted in the rescue and for those that helped perform CPR for over 90 minutes.